Welcome back to the Fell Engine Project, where I'm building a 3.5 inch gauge live steam locomotive to my own drawings. On this episode, I make the crank arms, using the rotary table on the mill. To make these crank arms, I'm going to need a couple of mandrels for the rotary table. These mandrels are similar to the one I used for making the wheels a few episodes ago. Today I'm going to show you how I make one of the mandrels before we kick into the crank arms. Start work over at the horizontal bandsaw, cutting some 25mm old steel round bar to turn the mandrel out of. Once that's done, it's over to the mill, where I mount the mold steel round bar in a collet chuck. I square the end of the rod and then zero the digital readout for length. I can then start roughing the part out. As I get closer to the final diameter, I stop and measure the diameter, and then set the diameter on the digital readout. From there I can cut to the final size. With the diameter to final size, I use a spotting drill to drill a centre mark. That's then followed by a 3.2mm drill to suit an M4 thread. With the hole drilled, it's time to tap the hole. Using a little cutting oil on the tap, I cut the thread, backing off occasionally to clear the swarf. With the thread done, it's time for me to turn my attention to the other end of the mandrel. This has a Morse Taper 2 taper on it to fit the centre of the rotary table. To start this, I'm going to set up a Morse Taper 2 dead centre between centres so I can measure the angle adjusting the top slide until it's at the correct angle. I set up a magnetic dial indicator on the tool post. This measures the distance between the tool post and the centre, confirming the top slide is at the correct angle. I zero the dial indicator with the cross slide. I make a couple of passes, checking the angle and adjusting the top slide. As you can see I get pretty close, with the jitter being from playing the top slide. With the top slide locked at the correct angle, it's out with the dead centre and in with the part. Now the opposite way round, in a smaller collet. I start by centre drilling the part for a centre. This will help with a little extra support as I cut the taper. I remove the mill scale and rough out the taper. With the tailstock now in place, it's time to cut the taper using the top slide. This is done in several passes, sneaking up on the final diameter. Unfortunately when using the top slide, the digital readout is no use at all, so regular stops are made to check the size. Once at final size, I use a lathe file to clean up the surface, followed by emery cloth. Now it's time to drill a hole to suit an M8 thread. This is 6.8mm. I use a spring tapping guide in the drill chuck to centre the tap and cutting oil to lubricate the cut.
And that's the mandrel done. So now it's time to head over to the mill and machine both sides of a 6mm plate flat. I'm using a 12mm roughing end mill to do this. I marked out the part with layout blue so I could check the spacing of the crank arms. This plate is going to make three crank arms. The size of the plate being an offcut I found in the scrap bin, so the fourth is in a second plate. I drilled the holes a half millimetre undersized and then reamed them at the correct size. These are six millimetres and the ones in the second row will be eight millimetres. I used the digital readout to locate their positions. With the holes complete, it's over to the bench to cut the plate into three. For this, I use a hacksaw. Now it's time to set up the rotary table, locating the mandrel and fastening it in from behind. Then it's over to the mill, zeroing the digital readout on the centre of the rotary table. The rotary table is then set to zero degrees, and the part clocked at zero using a square to align it. I use the Y axis to set the radius of the cut, with the X axis locked. I rotate to 90 degrees in each direction to create the curved end. It's then time to cut the stepped feature in a couple of passes. Then it's time to swap mandrels to the 8mm one which suits the hole in the other end of the crank arm. Once again I mount the part down, clocking it to 0 degrees on the rotary table using a square. This time I rotate the rotary table 96 degrees and then lock the rotation. This is the suit, the tapered shape of the plate. I then move the x-axis to cut the straight side. I then return back to zero on the x-axis and repeat the process in the other direction. With the cut complete, it's back to the bench for some hand filing and deburring to finish the part. At this point I test fit the crank arms, quartering them will be our job for when they're finally assembled. I'm currently pondering the final fixing of the crank arms to the axles. I'm planning on using some Loctite retaining compound and deciding if I need to drill and pin them also. Let me know your thoughts, comment below. Thanks for watching and if you enjoyed this video hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Catch you next time.